Pretty usual living on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. It is Teaching Tech Tuesday. Let's talk about pivot points, which are support and resist levels based on math for a specific time frame. If we want to add those to trading view, you can type in pivot in the indicator box. It'll populate pivot points standard, which is what I use. And then for the settings, I stick to traditional as well as yearly. Important to note if you are on a higher time frame and there isn't, you know, if you're looking at an alt and there is not enough data to populate a full yearly pivot, it'll just give you whatever data is available. So just always keep that in mind for charts with minimal data. And you can also look at the number of pivots back beyond the current time frame. So if you want to see previous years or previous quarters or months, you can change that here. And then I usually make these a little bit wider on the chart just so they're easier to see. So I prefer the yearly pivots. They're based on the open high low close of the previous year. They print on January 1st and do not change for the entirety of the year or the given time frame. Most of the time, but not all of the time, you'll notice or start to notice pivot points do a great job at highlighting maybe unseen levels of support resistance on a chart. For instance, if we add uh, something like VPVR and we're looking for Specific support resist levels that may not always align with pivots. If we're looking at something like the, the weekly cloud, which has a level at 42K, as there's clearly no pivot there exactly, you can always apply midpoint pivots into these wider spaces if you like. But generally, these are usually pretty good. Many times you will see a pivot confirmed as support and a move to the next pivot higher or a pivot confirmed as resistance and a move to the next pivot lower. Something else you'll notice from year to year or from time frame to time frame, when volatility contracts, the next pivot set will contract. When volatility expands, the next pivot set will expand. Once you start to see these on multiple different markets, markets you'll also start to notice how price reacts to the pivot ladder in bull market periods and in bear market periods. For instance, for Bitcoin during a bull market, we typically exceed the R5. You can't see 2013, but we exceeded the R5 in that case, exceeded the R5 in 2017, exceeded the R5 in 2020. And that would lead me to believe that if we do have a bull run in 2024, 2025, we will exceed whatever the R5 at that time may be. The yearly pivots for the next year, 2024, will be a tighter grouping than the previous year because we had less of a range from the open to the close throughout this current year. And we can pre-calculate those, and I'll show that in a second. Something else you'll notice, 2013, 2018, 2021, we came pretty close or exactly hit various pivot levels. So 1,300, 22K, seven, uh, 60, what is that, 63K? For 2021. And then in 2018, we hit that S1 low nearly to the penny. So it is math, but it's also a little bit of voodoo, a little bit of sentiment, a little bit of uh, chicken bone reading. There's more stuff we can talk about with pivots. I'll leave these for in the description of the video. But generally, you can identify a trend with pivots. You can see, are we climbing up or climbing down on the pivots? Or are we just ranging? Are we just stuck between pivot levels? You can gauge sentiment. How many pivot levels have we dropped above or below throughout the year? And then you can also use these as entries, exits, stops throughout any given position. They're calculated very basically, open, high, low, close, using the previous time period. And you can go from R5 to R infinity, S1, S2, S infinity, although at some point the support levels will be negative. Uh, Wikipedia also telling you more of the same here. Rarely used as entry signals, maybe not, but there's a case to be made if we're finding certain pivot points for me as support, I would definitely consider entries at those levels. I'll give the ETH example in a second, but these can be very good for exits of a trade. Typically what you want to see is price overextended into a pivot. That gives me added confidence that in the moment we're probably going to take a breather. The rally is probably going to slow down. Sometimes you'll see us hovering around a pivot and I never use pivots alone. Definitely always better with other indicators looking at, for example, RSI with divergences, divergences, the cloud, obviously, if we're bullish on the cloud or bearish on the cloud, I do like pivot to pivot trades when momentum comes back 
when we're done ranging. Do I think we're going to hit 59 by the end of the year? I don't. That's the current R2. And you can always use, you know, the previous year's pivot as well for support resistance, which is currently uh, 47. To me, that makes a lot more sense as a, the next resistance level. But if, for example, we spike somewhere into 59 or 50 something, the pivots would add to the argument that, hey, we should probably take some off the table here for a position. And once you look at these more and more, you'll generally notice, at least I do, maybe it's just uh, pareidolia, maybe it's confirmation bias, but once we find a pivot as a ceiling, we typically try to reach for the next pivot down. You know, in January 2018, did anybody think we would hit 3K? I don't think so, but the pivot had it January 1st, right? That would be the level. If this and that, if we turn over bearish, that's the expected level. And in 2019, you can see how we slowed down around that 8K pivot. I had thought 6K would be much more relevant because that was where we spent most of the time towards the end of 2018. But the pivot really helped argue a different level of resistance, right, at 8K. And then the next level up, and we also tapped that from a pivot to pivot trade pretty decently, found that as resistance. Then on the way down, we found 8K as a brief support again. Looking at ETH, you've probably heard me talk about this pivot to pivot trade a bunch of times now, but the reason 1990 is so important is because it has very clearly been a horizontal resistance level the entire year. And even going back to May 2022, when this all started as a local high, we really still haven't exceeded that level. So yes, there's a chart pattern here, but there's also a massive yearly pivot that once we regain momentum, that's why I like 3100 as a pivot to pivot trade. Now the daily cloud is also on your side telling you we are definitely more bullish than bearish here. Even though you could argue, you know, we've really gone nowhere for over a year. To me, the pivots do help say, it's time to start paying attention, right? This looks ugly and gross, and hopefully we can recapture that pivot and hold on to it. Because I still think by the end of the year, I like 3,100. Now, do I like 5K? I don't <laughs> by the end of the year, but maybe next year, right? And maybe we go from, 3100 back to 1990 next year and then whatever pivot from there but this as a setup looks incredible and then you add on the weekly cloud which also gives you confluence around 2800 if you measure this take the depth of the pattern measure it up you also get 3k so there's a lot of confluence for that 3100 level on top of just the pivot and that's when i think pivots are the most powerful when very clearly from multiple different measurements you're getting the same support resist. So I certainly don't expect pivot uh, ETH to exceed this pivot should this actually break out. And we can look at the other alts as well. We can look at Solana. Now, did anybody think, maybe maybe somebody did, 66 on the year. <laughs> maybe somebody said 66 once we broke 25. But there really isn't anything here, right? There's no horizontal anything per se from 2022 that you'd see readily, right? To me, this is just a, sort of a no man's land level. It doesn't measure to 66. There's very few reasons why we'd slow down up here. Obviously we're up 300% or whatever since the May lows, but this is just another example saying, look, if we are wicking into a pivot, there's a pretty good chance that that is the interim top. Now could Sol double by the end of the year from here? I don't think so, but if we break 66, that'd be the level to watch, 124. There's a weekly cloud level up there, but in the moment, 66, obviously a new local high is a very important level if Seoul is going to keep going. So looking at the yearly pivots helps me set my expectations for, yeah, you know what? Seoul is strong right now. It does look good. It has led the market, but I really don't think it's going to keep going because it's going to have a hell of a time breaking 66. Now, on the flip side of that, if it does, right, then we can get bullish again. But much like ETH at 1990, what we're more likely to see is maybe overshooting 66 on Seoul, maybe hugging it, maybe holding it, right? But to me, the yearly pivot is very telling of what's likely to happen for the rest of the year on Seoul. Link's a little different in that we've uh, you know exceeded that pivot. We're revisiting that pivot. I would never set blind asks at pivot levels because you just never know, and this is a great example. But once we've hit pivots like this, after a massive move and we're overextended, then I get more comfortable taking my foot off the gas a little bit, right? As I did with Seoul, personally, I, I let go of some of that. 
at uh, 60. So ideally for Link, what you want to see here is just holding this pivot. 21 by the end of the year, maybe. 21 next year, probably. Ideally what we see from here on Link is reconsolidation from 13 to 16, something like that. And then we test that uh, 21.5 level. Now we can calculate these ahead of time. There are pivot point calculators. This is Bitcoin. If we say the yearly high is in, if we say we close for the year somewhere around 35.4, we can add these to the chart. Gives you support at 30K, resistance in the mid 40s again. And it's only giving you up to the R4, right? So the R5 would be above 100K, I'd assume here. And that adds to the list of indicators that again are telling you if this is a real deal bull run post having, we likely see six figures as we have exceeded R5s in all bull runs for Bitcoin based on yearly pivots. It's also telling you it likes 22 if things tip bearish as support. And as people are popping the champagne on January 1st, those uh, new pivots will be there for you on the next day to check. Pivots work for any market, which is another reason why I love to look at them. This is the S&P. You can see how most of the year the S&P has ranged in between these pivots. This pivot level arguably was also important for the beginning of the breakout. You can see how we hit that pivot level almost to the dollar. You can see how we hit the all-time high pivot level almost to the dollar. You might even argue in traditional markets, these are more important because more people are looking at them potentially. Even on this retrace, we almost reached for the pivot. But similar to that Solana example, you kind of have to ask yourself, are we really bearish enough to keep going down here, right? So this does help gauge momentum, sentiment, and just is kind of a little sanity check on what's going on. So for the S&P, 4608 is the current resistance level. Obviously, everyone's already looking at that because it's a local high. But I would argue it's got a chart pattern on its side, cup and handle. If it can hold that 4608 level for a decent period of time, a week, you know, assuming it just doesn't blast right through it, I would read that as recapturing the pivot as support and potentially make a move to 5400, which would be quite insane, right? <laughs> now. The tech stuff, the cues, already well on their way to the R2, recapturing this local pivot. But again, you can see how we're treating these pivots as a ladder on the way up, on the way down. At the extremes, arguably we're painting, you know, support resistance. So 455 would be the next level on the cues. And then here's another example with the dollar. If you look at this 2021-2022 trend, we almost hit the R5 on the dollar. And depending on the instrument you're looking at, you can say, well, historically, has the DXY exceeded R5 during a bull run? I don't know that answer. I'm guessing no. And as we're climbing this ladder, you can start to say to yourself, well, things are getting more, more and more overextended, right? And at some point based on history, whatever it may be, right? For Bitcoin, it's above R5. For the DXY, I'm guessing it's within R4, R5, something like that. You can start to get more and more convinced that we're at the top of this ladder. For the current year, for 2023, you can see how we really weren't sure about this yearly pivot. Found it as resistance a bunch of times, kept breaking down. Did we ever really honestly have a chance for 93 and a half? Probably not. So that's kind of out of the question. Currently, though, we're losing this yearly pivot again. So obviously you'd say, well, sentiment is bearish. And it's kind of like, no, duh, at this point, right? This is a massive red candle. But the pivot points for next year should be much tighter. You'll get a tighter grouping of support resist. And this also leaves that 114 level on the table, which is also what the consolidation for most of the year measures to on the upside. So high time frame pivots generally super, super valuable for support resist levels that you may not readily see. They sit on the chart and are kind of a reminder of pay attention spots in the market. Most of the time, but not always, they are rather important, at least on the higher time frames. The lower stuff, I don't have too much experience with. So add them to the chart, give them a shot, try them out. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.